just bear with us. It hasn't gone live. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. 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 So, hello everyone. So, hopefully, right. Hopefully, we're there. All right. Everyone here? Okay, good, right. So just been just going through a few things, just checking for us. So hi, I hope you're all alright out there. So hopefully we're getting sound and everything. All right. Ben looks worried over here. It's all these little technical things that you guys don't see. So back to our little bar, we got our curving effect, our lines. Hopefully got sound. Let us know. Got our curves coming out. Great. All right. Thanks, Ben. All right. So lots of different patterns we could do. So we said on this one, I'm just going to do simple bow rim. So I've already turned the bowl, so I've got a bit of apple, straight spigot on the back, set of seed jaws. We can put that on the load. We know that will fit, so that would have been where I've turned my bowl. I've got my recess in here. What does that do? That's limiting how far I want to go with my carving, so I haven't got to go all the way to the centre. So give me a bit of a break light as well. It's important for someone to do a bit later. So just want to get something that's make my life a bit easier carving vice that we sell from woodcut so i can put that into the banjo if i can line the thread up on the chuck we can get that on screw that on i can change my angle a little bit if i get the right lever so a bit more upright i'm trying to make sure it's still in the picture view for you guys there that looks quite good I can possibly get forward just a little bit check finger tight so we've got our rim, we're going to do something, different embellishments on here. We're going to put it back on the lathe as well later so we can hold it on there. This just fixes it so I've got somewhere to work. All right, so first thing done. What should we start with? Okay. Let's bring some tools in. So something as carving tools, there's lots of different things out there. You use a couple of these. I'm just going to set two up. These are flexi cut tools. I've listed a couple of the ones I'm using. So I've got a V chisel. This one. All right, it's quite a V. Won't probably show too much on the camera. And I've got a curved one. All right. Just going to put those back out of the way. Ben? Okay, so we've got our, uh, a question from Robert. He's asking about your copper bracelet. Does that help with um, your hand joints? Um, my mum suffers quite badly from arthritis over the years. So this is magnet therapy. If it works or not, I can't tell you. But I do wear it. I wear it in reality. Lots of people say I wear it the wrong way around. I have the magnets facing outwards. Why? Because I use a bench grinder. And I find if I sharp my tools, all the magnet dust clicks on the magnets, the, the, the steel dust clicks on the magnets and it irritates my wrist. So I found that it's better to wear it the other way around. Okay. That's purely the reason for that. Okay. Uh, what should we start with? I'm going to get my glasses. Ooh. Let's have a look at what I did the other day. Try and get some inspiration. Which way do I want to go? Come down through there. So I've got V tool. I'm going to start from here. Right on the, on the edge. Now, I'm using my fingertip as a guide. Don't want to come in too deep. And yes, I've made sure things are nice and sharp. I can push straight. Oops, nearly quite high up on here. Oh, I don't know if Ben's got the main picture. A little bit higher than I wanted to work at. Be nicer to be on a workbench a bit better. But I can't show you that easily on the camera. And again, we'll go through, I'll zoom in a little bit as we start. Now, I'm using my thumb as a point here. I've got a square edge on the side just to start off. And it can be tricky to get your gum. I need to come in from the edge, and I'm working away from my body so I can push in. So V-tools are really good. They think of you a nice shallow line. Just control it, push through. Now, what I'm trying to do with this is a cut. And I've got four lines at the moment. I don't know if you'll see them there. Let's just see if I can bring you just a little bit in. So I've got my lines up in here already. Too much, back a tiny bit. I don't want to play too much with the camera because I've got it set for the next little bit. 
So just before I do the question with Ben, I'm using the top of the V tool, so the corner, is my guide of where I want to start the next line. So I come over in line with what I've just done. So the top corner is in line with where we want to start the next line. And then I use that to follow through. It's a little bit tricky. I'm going cross grain, push through. Okay, Ben. Um, so we've got a question from, oh, sorry, a question from Dewey Shed. How do you sharpen those tools? Okay, now Flexi do do a polishing block, little gold leather strop and a polishing block you can go on. Um, I also in here, we use the ultimate edge grinder that we have, or even the Tormek, and actually I just buff them. So even the gold strop that you get with the carving tools that Flexi Cut do, or the green compound that we put on a stitch polishing mop, anything like that will actually just buff it. I'm not actually sharpening it too much. I'm using the buffing compound to get a really sharp edge. And yeah, before I came in here, I've tried to make sure they're nice and sharp. Real important bit. Um, Flexi Cut quite nice because actually probably one of the only carving tools I know that when you buy them from new, they come sharp, ready to go out the packet. But you've then got that dilemma of you've got to be able to maintain that. And that's an important part, definitely for these. Okay, so hopefully that helps. We will look at the ultimate edge and do some sharpening on there on the polish. So Ben. And then a question from Frederick. He's talking about the um, the Proxon Carver. Yep. Um, and he notes that it's only 50 watts. Is that powerful enough to... Um... I'm going to use it. But, and I'll go for that actually when we use it. We're going to do that in a second, Frederick. So it's a good question. Um, and I will go through more, if you like, do's and don'ts. So let's do a few more of these. So wiggle to start it. A bit deep on the edge there. Let me get in. Got a line now. Good. I've got to bring my arm up because... I need to be taller. Trying to follow in and guide it from where we were on the previous one. That's good. So as we said, we're using the top edge of the V tool as my guide of where I want to come in and push through. Trying to keep my pressure the same. The other thing I find great with these, I can push down on the body of it and the tool flexes. That helps me get an even cut. Some people don't like that. And the aspect that they find the tools moving and flexing. All right, so I know the start point of this, the tricky bit to get going. Now I'm in, I can adjust, I can push down with my finger on my right hand. It's causing pressure, pushing the tool down, trying to keep it equal. Push it through, last little bit. So quite amazing that you can use this spring pressure here, help get a straight line. Not going to show you too much, but you can see how that moves. I push it in the center. Quite a useful addition to thinking about how you do it. Normal carving tools, trickier to do. So let's just do a couple more on there. So series of straight lines. Now, just before we do Ben's question. And you can have them so they look quite random. I think you can see them there. They look quite equal coming in. The parallel. They're not dead straight. I want it to look hand carved. We're going to show you ways of setting up and do other bits. So Ben, what have you got? Um, so a question from Cliff. Um, what wood is that? This is apple. It's just something we had here. It had a bit of rot in the back of it, a bit spongy, and I just kind of thought it'd be nice to use it. Um, ask me at the end of the session if I think it was easy to carve as I hoped. I'll let you know. Because it's a bit of a dense material, a bit hard. So we will say, lovely colour though. Ben? Okay, so there's a couple more questions. Um, Paul would like to know, um, what centres would you use to rough turn a three by 12 inch spindle blanks for making uh, for making boxes? To rough them down, so this is dry material or there's um, wet material? Uh, oh, okay. Centres, yeah. Okay, got one. Okay, uh, still only got one. So I use Pro Drive as a, as a drive center because you've got lots of little teeth gripping. You've got the spring loaded center we can wind back, and then I use my ring center. So the two most taper revolving ring center, definitely. I find it doesn't damage the fibers as much, doesn't go in as far, so you don't damage those fibers. Same with this center point, it's not going to damage the center point or split those fibers. So Lots of teeth, better grip than a four-prong drive. Ben? 
And Jenny would like to know, um, are some woods better than others if you want to carve patterns? Um, if if there are better woods, uh, which ones? Best timber if you're going to do flat flat work or even bow work. I, I even looked at it earlier. I've got a piece of lime in my room and kind of gone, maybe I should have a bit of lime and not the bit of apple. It'll be easier to do. Lime's probably the easiest thing to do. Something like this sycamore would be good to be really nice. The... the one that we've got on here that I played around with before, this is ash. Now, the problem with ash, you've got parallel grain running down through. I've got my curve and effect coming across. I can feel every single grain line as I carve across it because you're almost falling in between the hard and soft areas. So it can be trickier to do, but we'll still carve. So different materials are working different ways. The major thing, sharpness of the tool. Paramount that whatever you're going to play with is nice and sharp. Let's stick. So let's go to Frederick's thing a little bit then. I'm just spinning around trying to find stuff. So in here I've got another V tool. I think, Frederick, you are on about this thing. Proxim Power Carver. Okay. I've just put the V tool in. Quite small. I've read the reviews. We also do an adapter. It'll fit into here to take the bigger flexi cut chisels. Mm, I don't really think it's up to that. It's quite a small thing. It's more for small detailed work. Sadly, the best thing that we used to sell for the, the flexi cut chisels for the bigger sizes, and you can see the size comparison. And I'll give you, if you like, a chisel chisel that will go next to that. How much different that is. Bosch used to do a power carver. A green body thing. I don't know if they're still making it, but I know years ago they stopped making it. And that was the best thing for the flexi cut ones, especially on the bigger chisels. You can get smaller flexi cut ones that will fit into where I am now with the proxim one, but I tend to use it for lighter weight stuff. Ben. Um, so a question from Lawrence um, about the um, the pro mount. Um, does it have a base or does it only fit into the banjo into the tool? Okay. Bag? This one actually was the ben that ben, the one that Ben has in his room, so it has a carving plate. So if you look on the website, we do it, and it has a carving plate that you can fix down to a board on a bench. So I've taken the plate off the bottom, then I've added one of the stems that they use for the bowl carver or the bowl nester that will screw in underneath. So I've made it adaptable so it fit in the lathe nicely, which is a nice way of doing it. So hopefully that answers that. It's a standard item. It is there. You need a few components. If you get stuck, email me. I can find the list for you. Ben? Um, and then Jim's asking, is there any reason why you wouldn't use tulip? Yeah, you could use tulip. Um, tulip I find a bit fluffy, but tulip will carve. Don't, don't get it put it off. Tulip's really good for producing mouldings and stuff. So yes, it will carve. So give it a go. There's no point in starting with anything too hard. I'm going to regret it at the end of this. Um, don't want to start with something too expensive. In, in reality, the bland of the material may be the better because you're about trying to put the carving pattern in to create a bit of interest, a bit of texture. So there's no point in having something really elaborate as a wood and then trying to carve the top of it. You're going to deviate away from what you're trying to do. Okay, so a power carver. On and off, it'll make a bit of noise. I don't know how Ben will tell me if that's all right. Good, all right. So what can we do with this? Similar sort of thing to what we've done there. Now, this has a, if you like, a small hammer action. And you've got to remember what this is. It's quite a small thing. It's subject to already said 150 watts. Not massively powered. But on the edge of the good. Again, I'm using the side of the chisel to follow through blending. We can do different patterns. So it's fighting the curve wave sort of effect. So we get one in between. Nice on the edge again, again using the side of the tool, trying to keep them deep. A lot more curve, so let's just come um, into the get in.
So, it's one of our different effects a little bit, so we can store at different prices, blend in. So, on these tracks, I'm doing shorter ones just in between. Cut the noise down again. Right, let's just do that in there. Just going to lift this up a little bit. I think you can see the curve pattern appearing. So, you've got different shapes you can start to do. Now, I will say, I love using that for those V patterns. So this I did years ago with a friend. Um, you've got the thing next week with Nick Hager, where we're joining him. I wanted a few days with Nick years ago, and this is one of the things he challenged me to do. Start with a square block, roughly turn a bowl shape on the outside, then carve it, different pattern shapes. So great way of practicing and doing different things. But this is all done with that. Everything from start to finish was done with that V cutter and there. One chisel type did all those patterns, one shape chisel. So it really pushes you on to try and what can we do as a shape or a pattern, okay? Just before we go to bed a minute, this will get hot, all right? It works on a hammer action. So this is Ben's question. He's going to say it's getting nice and hot. He's just put his hand down, all right? First of all, how hard are you pushing this? Like I said, Frederick, you've hit it on the ball for me totally because it's 150 watts. 750 watts is a horsepower. So this is a seventh of a horsepower. This is a handheld power tool. Now, for those of you that suddenly then get your big flexi cut chisel and a small adapter and you start trying to push it in, no, it's not going to remove all of that. It's hard work. You know it's hard work because you've tried doing it with a chisel and then you've got to buy a power carver. So, yes, do think about it. It is going to get warm from being used a little bit. All right. So that was your question, was it, Ben? I'm sorry. All right. Got another one. Okay, go on. So, yeah, I think that answers um, Dances with Aardvark's question. He was, he was asking how long does it take before it gets hot? How hard's a piece of wood? Yeah. It's a terrible answer. I know, mate. Um, it, it's warm. I can touch it. I can really probably heat it up. Let's see what we can do. Then. <laughs> So have you heard the pitch change now? I'm going a lot deeper on this. Making it struggle a bit more working. I can still hold it. Now, much deeper pattern on here now. So I'm really trying to start going... I can come backwards a little bit and I'm probably going to block everything you're going to see in my elbow. Not quite. My body out the way, so I can pull the edge nicely. I'm just doing short bits to come off the edge here, so I can get something with the pattern from the edge. So we've done a few things there. Now, that's warm. I can keep my hand on it, but I know it's hot. So, yes, it will get warm. Okay, then that's that scenario of the aspect for, and we're going to use it again in a minute, but we hang it up out the way. So we put it out the way, we let it cool down for a few minutes, okay? It does depend on, obviously, the density, what you're trying to remove of it, how much, is the answer to that bit, how hard the work is, we've kind of covered the density, how hard you want to push, how much you're expecting to take off, all play a part in that little power carver. But fantastic for doing, like I said, the square blank I did, I couldn't believe I could do so many patterns with one schedule. Okay, done. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So a question from Maria in Wales. Um, what about the flexi shaft reciprocating carver that fits onto the Dremels? They will work. Uh, again, it depends on the unit. We do a heavy duty drive unit and we have a recrit pan unit. I wanted to bring one in here, but I just can't get the bits to fit together. Okay, would have done exactly the same thing. So, yes, you can use that. I use those loads at home with different things. So, great way of working. Doesn't get as hot. You've got a lighter hand piece to hold, and it hasn't got the weight to support, which is nice. You can get a bit lower because it's not as big in diameter. So, all those play an advantage, definitely. Ben? And then um, from, from Chris, um, he's saying um, for, for people using a, a Dremel and a carbide bit, could they get the same effect using like a rotary tool? No. No and yes. It's probably my best way of describing that. This will give me a clean finish straight off the tool. It's a carved effect. 
A rotary tool will tend to leave you what I would class as a sanded type finish, a white finish, not as clean. So you might need to clean up after. So they're all different things. And it's something I want to cover later on. Not today. I'm going to do different series of, so we will use rotary birds as well at some point and do so you show you what we can do with that. So yes, there is that aspect you can use rotary birds, but it won't give you quite a clean cut as a carving tool. You'd struggle a little bit to do the straight lines that we've got, but it is possible. All right. But I don't think you get quite as good a finish. So we're going to go back to our hand chisel just for a minute. So this is gouge. I think this is a number six, uh, just over half inch wide, I think, from memory. OK, I looked it up. It is on the list of the stuff we're using. Just going to bring the bowl round in there so I can get to that. Again, I can use the weight to push down on the tool. God, it's hard, this apple. Oh. Push into there. Try not to slip out the back edge. I've come round just a bit too far, so I'm crushed on the live headstock. Let's come back a bit. So just working back. Now I'm again using the pressure of my right finger. And I'm taking little scallops out to create a pattern. But this is all about the joy of being able to bend that chisel. So it will flex a little bit. So if I put pressure down, it helps keep it straight. And if I push down more, it pushes the tip up to help create a small scallop. Change direction just a little bit so I can come onto the edge nicer. And this is almost giving me the best way I can describe this is a ball pen hammer effect. Oh, I wish I was two inches taller. I could lower the light, I suppose. Oops. I'll get that one, tidy that up. Trying to be quite quick because there's quite a few things I want to try and go through a bit. But different patterns. So, again, if we just take this back out here, I'm hand where I am. Get like a textured pattern on here. Nice and smooth. Now, the nice thing with that, I hope in the camera picks, it does seem to pick it up all right. That gives me a polished finish where the tools cut it, which we've used a carving tool. If we'd done the rotary burr thing that we'd just been asked, that would look very white and dusty. So you'd need to clean it up with something. So that carving tool will give me a better effect, a nicer, cleaner finish. So bring it to there. Okay, let's go back to our power carver. So cool down enough. I need another tool first, don't I? Could have done this on the lathe a little bit. I want a straight edge. Might be a bit small, we'll see. Oh, bring that round. Come to the middle of it. There we go. There. No, I'm just almost putting squares on as a guide of what I want to do. Lock things off again. No, I could do this by hand. But the thing with this, so then you just get uh, an insert or sort of, or maybe nine pictures of stamps between the two. I'm not having to do a lot of pressure with it, so I'm holding fingertips on the back, supporting with my right hand. I'm not actually pushing very hard. It 
show on that one. Bring it up. Go to there, there. That one over there. So you don't need loads of pressure. Don't need loads of force. Gently working through, filling up my little squares. In the blank round a bit. to come right off the edge so let's just do this last bit on here and um just what Ben's got. so i've just turned it all the way around just checking you still on camera okay Hanging back up. No, but the guys in here, it's warm. I can hold it, but they do get hot, okay? So that's getting a bit warmer. We've done quite a few cuts there. We've done different directions. We're working different directions with the grain. Just before we go to Ben, let's see if I can find our cross hatch. You can see it down in here. Uh, little squares down different directions. Can be quite fun to do. Get me back in. Ben, what have you got? Um, so we've got a question here from from Hodgepodge. Um, do you have any experience using the Automac or the Arbitech power carver? I don't, but we've got a man that does. Yeah. So Ben's <laughs> used the Arbitech power carver. Yeah. So yeah. Great, go, ben. Go great on. You can tool. do that, mate. Go on. Talk uh, about yeah, that. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a great tool. So it, it's you know it's doing the same sort of thing. It's got that reciprocating head. Um, but it's you know it's on a, a grinder body if you like, um, and it, it's very powerful, um, very intuitive and easy to use, um, and there's hardly any vibration running through it either. I, I really like that tool. So um, big thumbs up for the Arbitech. Not use the Auto Macro. Go on then, Ben. Um, Woodwork Learner would like to know: Do the tool bits sharpen easily? Say if I could uh, do do those tool bits sharpen easily. So these, yeah, these aren't high speed steel, but actually, if you look at that's not sharp. That that's polished. All right, you got a mirror polish on the back of it. That's paramount with a carving tool. The other weird thing with a carving tool, and I'm hoping we can kind of see this. Maybe the flexi cut quite good for this. There's no change of direction from the front up through. What you don't want is your back of your tool up to your bevel, to your cutting edge. You don't want this sharp corner. Okay, can you see that on there? Let's go a little bit darker. So most carving tools tend to have your bevel and a sharp corner on the back. Move that. Okay, so if you end up with a hard corner here where you're coming up to your cutting edge this bit we want to soften it in so i actually polish it so it's more radius you don't have best way i can describe it it's almost like a crowbar effect so if you think about definitely with the curb tool that i've just been using or the gouge sorry let's write that the right way and just checking where we are 
if I've got something on the back of it that's like a crowbar, as I push in here and I try and bring my handle down, it just flicks the shaving up. You don't extend the cut. With this, I can go deeper and longer to suit what we want to do. So it's quite important. And the sharpness, if you're going to get into something like this, is paramount. It needs to cut. All right. And I know in here I have a bit of a reputation for being able to chase. How'd you sharpen that? Okay. So got to be nice and sharp but this all flows all the way down through there's no change of direction there's a curve on here not a hollow grind like we'd have on a turning tool so really sharp edge ben um maria and wales would um would like to know um if you happen to know if the wee cheer carving head will fit on the dremel fortiflex which is the so maria this is the heavy duty motor unit the hang up yes it should all right, I'm pretty sure it does because I've taken stuff that I used to Australia and done a demo and used a Ford and Ham piece out there. So, yes, I'm pretty sure it will. Definitely the rotary ones. Now, the carving one, I might need to check for you, but I know definitely the rotary ones will. All right, so leave it with me a day. I'll try and check first thing tomorrow morning, have a look with you, okay? And I'll do a, a comment somewhere. So, with this, it's paramount that you've got that soft edge, and that's quite a big chisel I've been got to do that. I'm going with the grain there. It'd be better to go cross grain if I can. It's going to be easier to carve going cross grain than going down the grain. But again, we can create simple patterns. Do that. Okay. Now we set up. We've got that one out. Go back to our power thing. Undo the little collet. So I'm just changing. I'm doing stuff off camera now. Like changing the cutter. So what did I do here to change the cutter? This has almost like a collet nut. I undo. These have a fitting that locates in, so punched out metal bit that goes in to locate. But you can also get flexi cut ones. So that will go in. So this is a flexi cut little gouge, not a V. Let's bring the work around a bit more. Oh, I wish I'd come back to there. Just checking where we are. I'm going to be up on here. Yeah, we can see that on the camera. So you can do similar things. With the gals, it's easier to go in than the V tool for this, and you get a nice start, a nice exit. And again, little power carver, definitely with the smaller size stuff. As long as you're giving it a chance to cut, and you've got the shirt, it's going to function nicely speeds up which actually can be quite a laborious job doing all these little cuts getting near the edge again so it's going to be easier to turn it round get the arm up a bit higher to get down in there So I start to cut and actually drop the motor unit down my thumb on here. It's almost acting as my pivot point can be control through that little bit of cut. So you can see how we can start to build up if you like, different pattern, different shapes. Begin with the little gouge. Which way should we go? We could come try to find a spot. Ta-da! So just building a different pattern, a lot more curve in this. Blend that in, look, we've got to the...
Yeah, again, just give you the idea because I know one of these things. I can hold it. Yes, it's warm. Most of my touch for this, I'm being quite light, not too much force. Definitely with the smaller carving bits will be better. I've got to take that carving bit out there. We're going to there and down. Where did it go? Oh. I don't want it hitting the metal object on the wall, but then we drop it on the floor. That's going to be good. All right, let's have a quick look. So we've got a range of different patterns now. We've just done this, this curved flowing shape now. I love doing this. It's almost, um, best way I can describe it, it's almost like a wood grain effect. And that sounds corny, doesn't it? But you can emphasize things, do different bits. Now, we have actually just, if you think, putting some texture into the surface. If you then, especially if it was flat, you've done the whole surface. And yes, it will take you a bit of time, depending on the size of the bowl. You could spray something like some ebonizing lacquer on it, sand it back, get a great black effect on here, just in those lines. Look really good. So could be really different. Ben? So a question from Frederick. Um, do the blades have a reasonable working life um, or do they wear quickly? I've never changed any. So that's weird. Isn't it? But go careful how you sharpen them. If you think about the length of these... The flexi cut tend to be a bit shorter. This is the gouge we've just been using. It's actually slightly curved on the back as well. I don't know if that will really show on there a little bit. Look. So that gives me better access with the tool as well because I haven't got to go as low with the workpiece or the tool to come down. I can actually keep it a bit higher, get more access to push it along. If you sharpen them in the aspect of buff them more than sharpen them, it will be better. If you look after them, that's the other stupid little thing. So most of these things come in something like a plastic wallet. If you store it safely, you're not banging them together. You're not going to take the edge off them. So you, you're protecting them whilst you're storing them. That's a major thing. Don't drop it on the floor. It's got metal particles in on our floor in here. So bend those are sort of. So it's still sharp, but look after it. Keep it polished. Polishing rather than so if you have a Tormek or when I use the Ultimate Edge next to try and do a buffing system with. And it's an expensive item. Somebody say, yeah, but actually speeds it up. I love it for that. Tormex is good for polishing the backs of these because you can actually polish them up so they, they shine. Difficult to do with hand. You can use the little block they do supply, but it's hand labor, isn't it? So somebody's like, oh, it's, a, it's hard work. If you can get them really sharp, the better it's going to work with. It's as simple as that. So let's just put those back in their little case. Okay. Now, let's just do a little bit on here. So we've done different shapes. Let me just go back to my, I've done my bowl there. Done some straight lines, done some curves, little dot ones we've done. So this is looking at my ash one, square one we've done. What about these then? So this has got nice deep kind of effect on here. This is almost like stepping stones coming up. Works really nicely. Deeper grooves. How can we do those? All right, so I've got two, if I can. Take my chuck back off of here. In there. Okay. Let's lose that woodcut melt for a minute. We could play with some different things to curve with. I can lose the banjo just for a second. Um, I'm going to bring that bit of pear back in that I've got. And I'm hoping. So some of you might have these, microplane. So we've got a round and a square one. Can be really good. Some of you remember my files and rasps. I love using these Japanese carvers files. Really good to work with. So going to use those. So different things we can play with. Now, obviously, you can start off, you could easily start to go, oh, I'm just going to come in. What about if you want to make something so it doesn't look quite as random? So, multi-head centre. Has that undoable collar. That goes in. Fits in. Oh, that little face plate. Piece of wood screwed on. I have a hole in the side. One of the screws I've got in is longer 
So it just pokes through the front. So it gives me something to dig into the work. So it'll go into the middle of the bowl in a minute. I've then got a piece of dowel. I've drilled a hole. I think this is eight mil. My dowel's about 12 mil. I can push that together. Put that into there. Okay. Got an arm. I can bring it up to here. Now, before I bring it up to there, on the other side of the lathe headstock, it's going to be about there, I've got the indexing. So on this headstock, I can screw in a pin and I can lock the bowl in place. I can do that. I can bring up my tailstock support now. I'm going to start round one. So we're going to go with the microplane. It will fit onto that half inch dowel, 12 mil dowel over it. It's a little bit of play. So we can basically, if you like, hand file a curve into there. One. Now, if I go back to the headstock, I undo. I've got to take off the tailstock pressure. The screw on that centre is doing a little bit of work to stop this slipping when it's in place. Come round one hole on the indexing. Okay. I can bring this back down. Now I've got to recite this. So I'm using the width for the tool. I could have drawn some lines out. Could have been good. But I can use the width for my tool. Drawing a pattern on first using the indexing would be a better way of doing your lines so you've got a guide. I'm feeling a bit confident. Go from there. We can do the next one. Then I'm just going to do one more. Now, we need to bring round one. I can work out my spacing. I can look at it. Pencil line would have been a better way just to give me a guideline of where I want to be. But I'm using the width of the dowel on the back edge for the last cut we've just done. Goes in. Oops, up the edge. I was just looking at how deep I was going on the edge, trying to get them equal. That's a case of sighting from where I'm stood. Let's bring that just up a little bit. Okay, Ben, what have you got? So Maria says she's given up on the, um, on the fl sorry, the uh, microplanes. Um, years ago, after she snapped two very quickly. Um, are they any stronger these days? What size were they, were, Maria? That's the first thing. Um, these only cut on the push stroke. Some of them are more fragile, I will say. And I do know, especially the smaller ones, so there's a smaller square and round one, yes, you need to be quite delicate with them. Vantage I've got was using where we are now. Is I've got something to support it. So it runs down. So I'm using that dowel. I'm just setting up, just locking the spindle because I don't want the work moving around when I'm working. My pin that I've got located on here gives me a guide. Also stops me bending it a little bit. But I do know, yes, with the smaller ones, yes, you can have issues that you can break them. But working quite nicely in there. I'll do this one and then we'll change. And my pressure really when I'm cutting is pushing away from me, only cuts that direction. So we've got four of those. Let's bring our bowl around. Second. Different segments in here. Now I'm being a bit, if you like, a bit rushed with this. It would be nice to spend a bit more time. You could get things nice and equal on your pattern, looking at this outside edge where I'm going to. If now we've got the start point, I want to go back into any. I can easily start to decorate or get back into there, extend that depth down. Okay, Ben, what have you got? 
So Maria just wanted to say that she bought the half-inch round one, which I think that's the one yeah, that you're using. Big, yeah. And then the small triangular one. The small triangular ones are the ones that I know I've seen snapped in the past because they're a bit smaller, a bit... These aren't too bad, all right? Um, also useful in this food industry, you can grate chocolate, chocolate and nutmeg and all sorts of it. Not chocolate buttons, though, okay? They're, 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 they go under the table from the other thing. We know that. So... Quite a useful tool. Nice to work with. But I know the small triangle ones are the ones that I have seen broken. Okay, so we've got round. I'm going to go square. So this is square ended on the end. I don't know if we can see that on there. Uh, got a slight opening. Got a right angle corner in the bottom. Again, I can use the same setup. I'm sighting now where I want to be with the top where it's open. And there's no metal down through here. I'm trying to look at where that is. Sorry, Ben. I'm moving too quick, don't I? So there's a gap down through here. All right, let's see if I can highlight it better with pencil in the middle. So you can see that gap down the center of it. So if I look at where I have that on my bit of dowel that we've got here is the support arm. And okay. So I'm dead upright at a 45 at the moment. Move round. I'm going to bring my work up on the indexing. Just give me a bit more sight line from where I'm coming in. Some of this I can't use the index for. I can use it as a stop if you like to hold. I'm looking at where I want to be. And then I can position now. If I wanted to use my indexing a bit more to do this, I'd draw lots of pencil lines. But it takes a long time to do for the video of drawing all the lines out. So I just kind of went, let's do a bit of improv and get it going. So this is making a V pattern. We can move it down again. So my little arm is giving me the accuracy of keeping it straight. Give me a location to start. The little screw that comes through digs into the top of the bowl just to stop it slipping So when I locate it. Now another little V. Do one more of those. Again, sight in from the side, I can see where I'm going to start. Lock that into place by bringing the tailstock up. So I took one, got a little bit of movement there. Let's do that back up. It's not quite as deep. So I'm just going to extend them. I could put my arm back in, but I've got enough as a groove now just to run that through. Let's have a look at where we are. I've got one more I want to do on here. I just want to see if we can show you the different shapes, different patterns. And again, when I started looking to try to do this, it kind of originally might want to be on a workbench, but then you suddenly it defines everything, tones it down a bit. So nice hollows coming up in here. These are V shape. They work quite nicely. Radius from the center. If you'd changed how the pin is supported on here so if you drilled your hole so you're higher up and you're off center you could actually get them coming higher up off center on the bowl you get like a spiral staircase come around so there are ways of adapting that so this little jig thing for the tail stop great way of just supporting that get a location so up so i'm going to lock the spindle back on the headstock again Back to the square one. Now, instead of being with the V dead on the bottom, I'm going to put it slightly off one side. So the bottom corner is almost level on the top edge. So 
45 is there. I'm bringing it round, so I'm rolling my wrist just a little bit, so I'm pushing the opening further over. Bring the tail stock up before I go to there, look. Check we're locked on the spindle. So just sighting in from the edge. Feet we've gone. That looks good. I want to click round on the indexing on this one. I've got to try and do that. No, look. Just a bit. And that screw point just out of the way. Get the index to lock back in. That's better. Set position for the next one. And again, I know when I did the original, they started playing around. So much easier just to draw a couple of pencil lines, span them out from the center. Set it up. So I've got my tilt angle again. Have a look, see what's going there. Bring one more down there. I've got a bit of cleaning up to do on these. So my angle need to be down just a tiny bit. Again, using that microplane, got remember you've got a cut pushing away from you. My little bit of dowel is supporting that nicely. Just gonna come up around that the things occasionally used, which will be good for this. Japanese rasps. Now, the smaller Japanese rasp I've got has a curvature that matches back of my dowel so I can file them in this is quite a fine one so it is possible to do half round I've got a shallow profile in there on the way done I just want my clean up session now so I go back to that carving mount just the fact that it'll be easier for me to put this in the vise instead of lean over the lathe and look at a funny angle so we take that back off. Put that one on there. Where was I around there? Okay, Ben, what have you got? Sorry. Just takes time, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Um, so Maria's saying um, that she realizes it's probably dangerous and a silly thing to ask, um, but is there a way that you can hold a router cutter in the headstock? And, um, and um, can, the I, can I stop you there? No. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Um, router cutters go in routers. That's it. Um, drill bits go in drills. Don't go trying to change the bit. Don't go putting router cutters on lathe. It won't go fast enough for it to cut accurately. It's also going to flick the work out your hands if you've got any left. Okay, so keep your router cutters for your router. There are ways, uh, there was a guy called Paul Howard who makes a fluting system for routers to fit onto a lathe. So it hold the router cutter in a router on an arm so you can move that across. That sort of thing's possible. But don't go put them in your headstock, please. All right. I want you to keep your fingers. All right, so uh, let's go and have a look at all oh, flats, Japanese file. So this is cleaning up what we've just done with the microplane. This has a dead edge, so no sharp edge, so I could do either. I know I'm not going to deviate too much away from the shape we've got. This is giving me my... Um, oh, windmill type effects, I suppose. These come up at an angle... 
easy to clean up with this. Right, just seeing where we are there. Got a bit to get in the back. Didn't go as deep with that one that I should have done. So that's square. Round ones, again, depending on the shape of the curve, if I needed something that's going to clean up in here, a bit lighter. Japanese carving files give me a really clean finish straight off the tool. So in reality, it cuts down the sanding. And the less you have to sand this, the better. Because if you start sanding this, you deviate away from the shape. So if you can get something that will leave you a clean finish, straight off the tool, carving stuff, definitely. Japanese curve as well. I don't think you'll get a better finish than that. And it's difficult to show you on camera. I'll try and lift this up in a minute. Let's do these four and we'll see what we give you. But the minute you start trying to sand this, you're going to soften all the edges. You're going to ruin the crispness that you've developed. So Cliff, when you went to Wizardry, you looked at my sunset bowl. The sun rays coming out from the centre. Lots of this. I'll do it that way. I don't know if that'll show, but actually, they're really clean down through here, nice and smooth. Hopefully, no sanding if you're going to do that. It takes a little bit of time. There's different grades, there's finer ones, there's coarser ones. I think let's have a look and tell you what I've got on there. That's fine, that's an extra fine, I think. So, nice, small, he's got sharpened edge, curled either side. Great to get into that sort of shape. Work through. Flat one will get in here nicely. I've got a bit more work. I've got a few little marks to get rid of. But quite easy to do. Come on then, Ben. What have you got? So Cliff would like to know what your verdict on carving apple is. Is it a good word to um, carve? It, it, it's harder than the ash I played with. It's quite dense. This came from Kent. This was uh, some trees that came from where... A guy had a warehouse that he had built and took the apple trees out. The last little thing I've got, NT sanding plates. Better than a brazier paper. Again, has nice clear edge on this side, so nothing's going to damage anything. But I can get into those flat shapes there. And the nice thing with this, especially on a flat, you can get right into that corner, get that edge nice and clean. It's not deviating, it's not softer not rolling around the edge either so it keeps everything nice and crisp weird little things that make a difference nice to hold you've seen me turn it around so i can work different directions with this make it comfortable to hold again i just needed to be two or three inches taller just to be up just a bit okay just a bit high this on the on the, the lay bed to get to nicely for me Sanding plates will clean that up nicely as well. So there are ways of using different things that are there to give you good results. All right, let's have a look at them. We've got, I think we do, uh, it's a variety of different things. So I'm a bit traditional, so traditional carving tools. Got nice steps in here. They come down off the edge, steeper. B cuts, half round, we just did microplane. Love these patterns. I have got some boxes at home that I've done where they're done in walnut. All this is carved in, then painted black, sanded back all the surface. You get these black lines all the way through. Lots of different patterns can be done just by playing around, having an experiment. Maybe knock up a, a scrap piece of wood you've got. Have a play like we've done there. Try different shapes, different patterns. You'll, you'll be amazed on what you can do with, how you can get to those different ideas. Paint drawing. Power carver, really good. Remember we said about that heat thing. Remember what it is. It's a, it's a, actually quite a small power tool. Makes life a lot easier, but if it starts to get really hot, yeah, put it down. A few of the guys that get through. If it's making lots of noise, just try to do too much. Or cutters blunt. So sharpen that, that 
couch, that V-tool, make sure it's nice and sharp. Think about which way you're cutting with the grain as well. That plays a real part of this. I've moved things around so I can cut across the grain easier. Can come down the grain. I've got to think about what's going to happen if I come down the grain. Is it going to tear out more rapidly? So think about things like that. All right, Ben, we got. Uh, Maria would like to know how long the NT sanding plates last for. Nice thing with these, and again, if you look at them and you use them and what they're for, they clean out. Um, I always thought these were plastic. They're not. They're metal underneath for a plastic surface. They sharpened, and sharpened isn't the correct terminology. They're actually etched, I think, is probably the best way. A bit like the Japanese carver's file. So they have quite an abrasive tooth. Again, you need to look after it. If we throw it back in a box and it's hitting everything else, yes, it's going to start to rub off because you're hitting metal on metal. When you get these, they come in a little uh, blown plastic case, so it's worth putting it back in there if you can, so you look after it. Or if you've got two holes, hang it on the wall so it's not going to be affected by anything else. But you have those holes that you can hang it up. But try and look after them. Weird and wonderful thing that's going away from a little bit where, where we are. My two carving or turning tools that I have, so my square edge, my round nose, if I go off and do a club demo, I was out doing a club demo last night. These go into my chisel roll, but they are the two holes these go in have pipe lagging in, so they are foam lined because I don't want to damage the sharpened edges that I've spent time to get nice and sharp. So I protect them. I'm thinking about what I'm doing with those things in between not being used as we, if you like, bounce around our workshop a little bit, trying to get things set up and you know you just throw things on the back of the bench yeah things are going to get broken dented scratched abused lose that cutting edge keep things sharp they're going to function so much easier all right Ken and Ben we got any more all done with those wow so then guys thank you all very much hope you enjoyed it I'd love to see the pictures if you're doing these your hand plane screwdriver knobs I'm flattered that you had a go I kind of got the impression last week no one was watching but obviously you were so more Woodworking Wisdom next week. We'll see you then. Goodbye.